you're asking whether or not turning on artificial lights can replace sunlight at those hours, unfortunately, the answer is no. Picture a life where fatigue is a distant memory, and each day overflows with unbridled energy. It's absolutely achievable, and it all begins with today's video. Many people are experiencing severe vision problems because they're not getting enough sunlight during the day. They have sleep problems because they're not viewing sunlight early in the day. Adopt a positive outlook, nourish your body with wholesome foods, and engage in activities that truly ignite your passion. The more you invest in self-care, the more invincible you're going to become. So embark on the journey to chase your dreams and never let tiredness stand in the way of your success. Put simply, when you get tired, your eyelids close. And when you're alert, your eyelids are open. That is because you have neurons in your brain that depending on your level of alertness will make it easy or hard to keep your eyes open. Each one of us has the innate power to triumph over exhaustion and live our lives to their fullest potential. By enveloping ourselves in a constant source of inspiration and motivation, we can unlock a never-ending supply of energy. Seek out small victories in your day-to-day -day life and take the time to celebrate them as constant reminders of your capability to achieve greatness. Stay determined, maintain unwavering focus, and persistently push forward. Promise you're going to be astounded by the incredible heights that you can reach when you never feel tired again. I think it's fair to say that most people would like to have a lot of energy during the day, if you work during the day, and they'd like their energy to taper off at night. And I think it's fair to say that most people don't enjoy being sick. Nobody wants to get sick. In other words, you want to have energy and you want your immune system to function well, to ward off infections of various kinds, bacterial infections, viral infections, etc. The journey to never feeling tired again starts with a simple yet profound step, wholeheartedly believing in your own potential. Discover and nurture your inner spark with unyielding positivity, ample rest, and dedicated self-care. As your strength grows, you're going to find that your reservoir of energy expands as well, allowing you to take on even greater challenges with boundless enthusiasm. Embrace this newfound vigor and let it propel you towards your aspirations. Always remember that you are truly unstoppable, and after watching this video, I promise you're going to learn exactly how. I made two promises here, and if I can't deliver, then my name ain't Schmitty. It's, it's not Schmitty. But what happens when we get tired? Our eyelids close and our chin moves down. We tend to nod out this way. If you have ever been in a classroom, certainly not one of mine, but if you've been in a classroom and the lecture is kind of drawing on or it's the afternoon, what you'll notice is that a number of students, their heads are chilled, kind of their eyelids are closing and their chin is dropping. And then they, you'll see a bunch of heads bouncing back up, right? I was definitely one of those people in class. If it was post lunch in the afternoon, it's warm, the hum of the air conditioner, whatever it is, and I'm just out, okay? So first of all, I want to give you a tool that will help you regulate cortisol and can also help stave off certain patterns of mental illness. Now, of course, it's not going to cure mental illness on its own, but it can support healthy state of mind and can help reduce unhealthy states of mind, including depression. So the first tool is to make sure that your highest levels of cortisol are first thing in the morning when you wake up. One way or another, every 24 hours, you will get an increase in cortisol. That is non-negotiable. That is written into your genome. That increase in cortisol is there to wake you up and to make you alert. It's to stimulate movement from being asleep, presumably horizontal, to getting up and starting to move about your day. And I've said it before, but I will say it again. The best way to stimulate that increase in cortisol at the appropriate time is that very soon after waking, within 30 minutes or so after waking, get outside, view some sunlight. Even if it's overcast, get outside, view some sunlight, no sunglasses. Never look at any light so bright that it could damage your eyes, but do that for two to 10 minutes. If it's very bright, two minutes. If it's not so bright, 10 minutes. Do that. Because in the early part of the day, you have the opportunity to time that cortisol release 
to the early part of the day, which will improve. This has been backed by peer-reviewed studies. It will improve your focus. It will improve your energy levels, and it will improve your learning throughout the day. It will also prevent a late shift in cortisol increase. And late shifted cortisol, meaning cortisol that increases around 8 or 9 p.m., is a signature feature of many depressive disorders, including major depression, anxiety, and that, of course, correlates with things like insomnia, etc. So try and get outside, ideally within the first five minutes of waking, or maybe it's 15 minutes, but certainly within the first hour after waking. I want to share with you three critical things about this tool of morning sunlight viewing. First of all, this is not some woo biology thing. This is grounded in the core of our physiology. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of quality peer-reviewed papers showing that light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. So this is really the foundational power tool for ensuring a great night's sleep and for feeling more awake during the day. Second of all, if you wake up before the sun is out, you can and probably should flip on artificial lights in your internal home environment or apartment or wherever you happen to live if your goal is to be awake. If you wake up at four in the morning and you need to be awake, well then turn on artificial lights. Once the sun is out, however, once the sun has risen, then you still want to get outside and view sunlight. Some of you will wake up before the sun comes out. And if you're asking whether or not turning on artificial lights can replace sunlight at those hours, unfortunately, the answer is no. Unless you have a very special light, we'll talk about what kind of light, the bright artificial lights in your home environment are not, I repeat, are not going to be sufficiently bright to turn on the cortisol mechanism and the other wake-up mechanisms that you need early in the day. Many people are experiencing severe vision problems because they're not getting enough sunlight during the day. They have sleep problems because they're not viewing sunlight early in the day. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes, they're getting a lot of artificial stimulation, artificial light stimulation of the eye in the middle of the night. All of this is through the visual system. So migraines, fatigue, challenges with your eyesight getting worse as you age, or even in young people, there's a, you know, at least according to the articles, they describe it as this epidemic of myopia, can largely be dealt with by getting outside, going into panoramic vision, experiencing some distanced vision, look at things off in the horizon. If you're walking or hiking or biking, not looking at your phone the whole time that you're doing that. If you're at the bus stop or you're uh, commuting, certainly not looking at your phone the entire time you're doing that. So this is vital. And I want to emphasize another protocol, though I don't want to get into it in too much depth because I want to make sure that I also talk about a number of other important aspects of the visual system that are more related to sight. But getting into optic flow is very important for de-stressing your system. When you move through space, whether or not it's through walking, biking, even swimming, if it's self-generated optic flow, so probably not driving or motorcycling, but yes, bicycling or, I don't know, unicycling. I don't know why I thought about unicycling. There used to be a graduate student at Stanford who was a really impressive unicycler. Those are pretty rare. As long as it's self-generated optic flow, meaning you're generating motion of your body and the visual images around you are passing by on your eyes, That is very good for the visual system, and it's very good for the mood systems and the neuromodulator systems of the brain and body that regulate mood. This is well established. So I'm not telling people to get away from their phone and their computers. I spend a lot of time staring at a page, drawing, writing, texting, et cetera, just like you do. But we're really talking about some very simple protocols that aren't just designed to improve your sleep, but are really designed to bolster and enhance your vision. This is why it's vital to get this light on a regular basis, to get that cortisol released early in the day. That sets you up for optimal levels of energy. It sets you up for great sleep. But today's not really about sleep. It's more about energy. That cortisol pulse and the stress that you might feel early in the day from having a little bit extra energy, that is the energy that you want in order to move about and learn and do do various things. That is a healthy level of energy. So... 
please try and get that sunlight if it's within your protocols to do that and try and get sufficient sunlight first thing in the morning again within the first hour. That's the best way to make sure that you time your cortisol appropriately. How much light and how much light viewing do you need? This is going to vary depending on person and place, literally where you live on earth, whether or not there's a lot of tree cover, whether or not you're somebody who has sensitive eyes or less sensitive eyes. It's really impossible for me to give an absolute prescriptive, but we can give some general guidelines. In general, on a clear day, meaning no cloud cover or minimal cloud cover, you want to get this sunlight exposure to your eyes for about five minutes or so. Could be three minutes one day, could be seven minutes the next day, about five minutes. On a day where there's cloud cover, so the sun is just peeking through the clouds or it's more dense cloud cover, you want to get about 10 minutes of sunlight exposure to your eyes early in the day. And on days that are really densely overcast or maybe even a rainy, you're going to want to get as much as 20 or 30 minutes of sunlight exposure. Another key thing is do not forget about Just don't try and get this sunlight exposure through a windshield of a car or a window, whether or not it's tinted or otherwise. It takes far too long. It's simply not going to trigger the relevant mechanisms. You would be standing there all day trying to get enough light into your eyes from the morning sunlight. And by then, the sun will have already moved from low solar angle to overhead. And it simply won't work for all sorts of mechanisms related to your circadian rhythm functions. So just don't try and do it through a windshield, sunglasses, or a window. It's just not going to work. Now, throughout the day, you're going to experience different things. Most of you are not spending your entire day trying to optimize your health. You know, some of you might be, but most of you have jobs and you have families and you have commitments. Life enters the picture and provides you stressors. And those stressors, whatever they may happen to be, a difficult coworker, some disappointment about something, you didn't get the raise you expected or you didn't get the vacation that you expected, those will cause increases in cortisol and epinephrine. This is important to understand. You don't have the the luxury of just having this morning cortisol and then having it taper off. You want that major cortisol early in the day, but then you can expect, you should expect, increases in cortisol and adrenaline throughout the day based on events that are unpleasant to you. So for me, the events that are most unpleasant to me are things like traffic, Um, emails that ask me to fill out a form for which I can't find the link. These kinds of things stress me out. I'm a human being. I don't lose my cool over them, but I can feel my level of alertness and kind of frustration increase. The normal kind of things that go with stress tense up a little bit. The key is these blips in cortisol and epinephrine need to be brief. You can't have them so often or lasting so long that you are in a state of chronic cortisol elevation or chronic epinephrine elevation. This system of stress was designed to increase your alertness and mobilize you towards things, get you frustrated, and provide the opportunity to change behavior. That's what they were designed to do. So if you find yourself getting stressed and staying stressed, there are great tools that we provide in the stress episode that relate to things like the double inhale, exhale, the so-called physiological sigh. You can incorporate an NSDR, a non-sleep deep breath protocol, et cetera. But understand that the energy that you experience during stress, that sudden increase in alertness and attention that comes from seeing something difficult, that is a healthy hormonal system and neural system that's working. And the reason it works is that cortisol, when it's released into the bloodstream, it actually can bind to receptors in the brain. It can bind receptors in the amygdala, fear centers, and threat detection centers, but also areas of the brain that are involved in learning and memory and neuroplasticity. And this is why I say that neuroplasticity, the brain's ability to change itself in response to experience, is first stimulated by attention and focus and often a low-level state of agitation. So understand that and you won't be quite so troubled about the little stress increases that you experience throughout the day. So here's a protocol that anyone can use if you want to increase levels of energy if you suffer from low energy during the daytime or whenever it is that you'd like to be alert. Pick a practice that you can do fairly consistently, maybe every day, but maybe every third day or every fourth day. Maybe it's an ice bath or a cold bath. Maybe it's a cold shower. Maybe it's the cyclic 
in, inhale, exhale breathing protocol I described, if that wasn't clear, and people always ask for a demo, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, but I'm willing to do a few rounds of this or a few cycles, I should say. So it's inhale. I would do that more deeply, more like you do that 25, 30 times repeatedly. You will start to feel warm. People in the yoga community, they say you're generating heat. You're not generating heat, you're releasing adrenaline. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, 25 or 30 times. You will feel agitated and stressed. That's because you're releasing adrenaline in your body. And that's because you're releasing norepinephrine in your brain. And you'll be more alert. And so while this might seem like the silliest and simple tool that I might ever describe on this podcast, if you are feeling tired, it actually can be beneficial to the wakefulness systems of the brain, including the locus ceruleus and these areas that release norepinephrine to actually look up, to actually look up toward the ceiling. You don't want your chin all the way back, but to look up and to raise your eyes toward the ceiling and to look up and try and hold that for 10 to 15 seconds. So this isn't looking up and closing your eyes like on a nice sunny day. That's relaxing. This is looking up and actually looking up at the ceiling. It actually triggers some of the areas of the brain that are involved in wakefulness. So if you're somebody who's falling asleep at your work, this can be very beneficial. Likewise, many people are looking at their phone all day and their chin is down and then they're sitting at a computer that's positioned below them and they're having trouble staying awake or focusing. It can be very bad. I tell Costello this all the time because he's always falling asleep while he's trying to do his work. Positioning your computer screen up at eye level or sometimes having it actually above eye level can actually create wakefulness and alertness for the work that you're going to do. This is simply because of this connection between the brainstem circuits and the other neural circuits that control wakefulness and eyelids opening and looking up. Okay, so it's, again, it's remarkably simple, almost laughably simple, but it's grounded in some of the most hardwired, meaning present from birth aspects of our neural circuitry. And norepinephrine released from locus ceruleus isn't just a mouthful. It's a really interesting and powerful mechanism for how the rest of the brain wakes up. Locus ceruleus hoses the rest of your brain with norepinephrine in order to wake up those circuits for work and attention. And so eyes up, is actually a way, a route into increased alertness. Eyes down is a route into sleepiness, into reduced alertness. 